jumped on the plane London to Accra, Accra but when I touch down in Kotoka Got love for my people, we go hustle every day, more power to my people The hustlers, street sellers to the sweet mothers On the grind every day, helping each other Making moves, make it happen, that's the signature Ghana we there, throughout the diaspora Making moves in Ghana, making moves in G Welcome to another episode of Making Moves Ghana with me, Julian Ansa. The fintech industry in Africa has been growing at an exponential rate. Everything from mobile money to remittance transfers has been at a mass scale. So today I'm over in Spintex with a fintech company called Zuberry. We're going to meet the founders of this interesting and innovative tech company in Ghana and learn what they're doing in transforming the fintech industry in Ghana. Julian. Hey, Julian, my namesake. Good to see you, bro. How are you huh? feeling after the workout? I'm feeling good. You know what? It was, it's refreshing. You know, like I say, new week, new energy. Absolutely. So it's Monday refreshing. Morning. And it, it's amazing in terms of, like, what brought about you and the Zuberi team deciding to work out, like, a few times a week together? Kina has always been part of my life. Right. Um, you know, from my sporting background, just working out every day, training, it just always made me sharp, always made me productive. Mm -hmm. The culture at Zuberi basically comes from myself and, and Nana. So, you know, I just had to like bring my life and my culture into Zuberi and I think it's just made everybody else like just productive. You know, we work out on a Monday, a Wednesday, a Friday, and yeah, you know, it's just a good way to start the day. Start the week. Yeah. And also the energy amongst the team, is it, does it it's bring high. something different it's as high. well? It's massive, yeah, it's high. You know, before we wasn't working out, but when we started working out, first few weeks, people were tired. So people were tired in the office. But then now, like, energy levels are just higher. Like I was saying to you earlier, Monday morning doesn't feel like Monday morning. Right. It feels like a Wednesday, and we're just out. We're just, we're just getting things done. Okay. Well, listen, it's great being able to come down. I know we've, been, we've well, connected, and we've yeah. been talking over the last few months, and you're also going to be involved in tech in Ghana yeah. this year for the first time. So before we get into the business and the company, for viewers and people watching the, this episode, um, let them know a bit about your background. I know you're a British Ghanaian. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just let people know a bit of insight into who Julian is and how Julian came to being in Ghana, setting up a tech company. So I was born in the UK. Um, I grew up in South London, Mitcham, um, to be precise. Yeah. And um, I came here when I was 16, in like 2008, to play for a Division One club called Eleven Whites. So that's the first time I came here. I literally came in by myself, didn't know anybody, had no friends, nothing. Got promoted that year um, into the Premier League. Then I moved to my second club called Breakoon Chelsea in the Premier League. That year we won the treble, we, like, we won everything in this country. So um, yeah, since then I've just been like here and back and forth, and, okay. um, just making it happen. And then in 2020, we, myself and Nana decided to start Zuberi and um, here we are, it's just been moving. You mentioned football, yeah. so who were you playing for back in the UK before you came to yeah. Ghana? Because so I haven't met a lot of people who've transitioned from the UK and you know, yeah. you're the first person I've met. Yeah, so I mean, when I came, I was 16, so I was literally playing like Sunday League. Okay. But when I came back, I played in the conference, I was at Hazen Yedin, Basingstoke, and I like, literally just played in the conference. Right. Um, and then, yeah, I came back here. And here we are. So, listen, let's go inside and see yeah, um, you, meet you, your team, yeah. and learn a bit more about um, Zuberi. Follow us. Welcome, this is the HQ. This yeah. is the Zuberi HQ. It's quite different from most companies here in Ghana. Um, but as you can see, it's like an, an open space. Yeah. Very relaxed. It probably feels like a bit like an agency, really. Right. Um, but yeah, the HQ is divided into a few different floors, but this is the main space. So mm -hmm. this is basically where we do um, all our main work. So we've got like our engineers on this side. Um, we've got the finance team on this side. I also work from here as well. We've got the marketing team who sits on this table. I think they're all around the, the, the office. Um, and yeah, basically we just do everything ourselves in-house and just yeah, we just produce. Right. We just produce. How did you go about um, building your team and getting your team together? Was there specific yeah, so qualifications or nah, like at, at the beginning it was about who can get things done. Right. Because uh, it was it was myself and Nana, so we just had to get things done. So the first guy we got on the team was Bennett over there. He was an accountant because mm -hmm. I needed that like, information on like how salaries work, how you know pay cycles work, all of that stuff. 
So he's the first person I got. And then I got Maoli, actually, data analyst on the team. Right. Because I knew that this company was going to be very data focused. So he was our sec second um, employee. And then started building the engineering team. And then, yeah, we've just been, we've just been growing. Building gradually. Yeah. So let, let, me, let me take a step back. In terms of Zuberi, let's understand, you know, what is the name Zuberi? What does it mean? And just in terms of what the service is that, you, yeah. you, that Zuberi provides. So we're providing a service for workers, right? So mm -hmm. people who work, maybe a nine to five, salaried workers, contractors, any type of worker, really. And so the name Zuberi came out, of, it means, Zuberi means strong. Okay. Right, strength. So it came out of us giving strength back to the worker, right? So that's how we got the name. I like that. Um, and the platform itself is basically a fully automated platform which allows workers to view their salaries, access their salaries. They can make payments. Um, they can manage their money. So like we've got different type of tools on the platform. Mm -hmm. Just allows them to just manage their money like in a way that really hasn't been seen before in the country. Right. And how did you see a need for this service in the market? Because again, you know, I'm thinking, hey, we're in the UK, we're, we're kind of used to, you know, the system and the way yeah. salaries go, or if I'm a bit short on my money, I can go and, people can go and get a payday, yeah. advance loan, etc. So how did you see the opportunity to bring the service that Zuberi brings? into I mean, the Ghanaian market. Yeah, I mean, the, pro the, the, the problem that we're solving is not an African problem. It's, right. a, it's a global problem. Yeah. You know, people receive their salaries and then their salaries run out within like two weeks, right? Right. But only the difference is in the UK, we've got different options, right? So maybe you need money, you can get a payday loan, you can get money from maybe the council or wherever. Right. There's just different options. Or right? an overdraft in your overdraft, bank account. Yeah, yeah, an overdraft. So you don't really feel it. Whereas here, there are options, but it's the same option a payday loan, a okay. predatory loan for a high interest. You know, so for me, it was first about how do we get people to have access to their money at all times, right? So literally, if I need money, I can go on the app and get money mm -hmm. in a few seconds. That, that's all we were trying to solve. But obviously, the product has like grown over the last two years where we've got different features on the platform. You, it's still all on demand, but you're taking your money in different ways. Okay. And that's come from us just understanding who the customers are, understanding what they want, and also us coming up with innovative ideas ourselves mm -hmm. that they don't know they want, if that makes sense. Right, okay, yeah. So yeah. we've put all of these things together, and it's just become our culture. We're just learning, really. We're just okay. learning who they are and offering new products. I like, I like how you said this. You also come up with innovative ideas for what, like creating services or products for what people want. Mm -hmm. it's, it's that kind of analogy like Steve Jobs. Yeah. You know, no, no one knew that they wanted a phone without any buttons Absolutely. until Apple created the iPhone. Like, innovation sometimes is the most basic stuff. It's the most basic ideas that we just don't think about. Right. You know, like, giving people their money every day. You know, they come to work every day, but they get paid once. Yes. Right? It's the most basic stuff, but that's where innovation comes so from. So it's a simplified simple, simple me stuff. method yeah. or a new mindset in terms of, like, how you're earning your income. Yeah, and simplicity is, like, literally the hardest thing to get to. Right. right. Literally, it's the hardest thing because something is in front of you, but to go and build it and make it simple that people understand it, it's often really hard. Yeah, that's yeah, a challenge, it's right? Really hard, yeah. That's good. So, like I said, this is the main space. Um, we've got the engineers over here. Um, so, they're just they're working really on the product constantly. They're working on bugs, fixes, um, integrations with other third parties. Um, and that's, that's basically what they're doing. Um, the screens here, we monitor our servers, we monitor transactions, we monitor sign-ups, registration, literally everything that happens on the platform, we can see it on these screens. I mean, right. It's not showing it now, but that's where, no, we that's where you it. can see it. And um, here we normally have the finance team, we've got accountants. Um, I also sit here as well sometimes, well, okay. most of the time. Um, yeah, they're just working on like revenue, everything, numbers, accounting. Then you've got a marketing team on this side, um, like Benjamin here, for example. He's a motion designer, so he's like works on our videos, um, graphic designer. So we do everything in house. Right, right. Okay. We don't use any agencies. We don't use any any other companies to do our um, our brand or any of our content. We want to take full control of our brand. We want to take full control of the story that we're telling people. The narrative. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you never see like a campaign coming out from Zuberi. This is just. It's just how we are. Or right? Organic. Whereas so, other companies, you see like, oh, they've just launched a campaign and then they run the campaign for like six months or whatever. 
for us, it, it's just it's just part of our culture. We just literally just put out videos, content, just to get our customers to understand who we are, mm -hmm. just to get other people to understand what we're doing and how we're doing it as well. So um, so that's what we do. Effie over there is head of marketing. Um, the rest of the team are not here, but yeah, she literally runs head of market. She runs marketing. She, she okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and what's good is that you're you're on the ground or as, as we say in the trenches with your team yeah absolutely. so it's not like you're kind of you know the old way of running companies it's kind of like a everyone's in this space yeah coll and collaborative i've got an office up there but i think i've been in there like six times like since we've been here i'm always here literally so yeah. um yeah i'm not that type of guy i'm not that type of ceo that's just sitting there yeah 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 like, no, crunching like, numbers or i'm actually just having high level yeah. discussions so, so with regards to funding and starting a company how have you gone about so pre-pandemic, I was still in the UK, I was working. So I was working my nine to five as a product manager, building tech. Okay. Um, so I was actually using my nine to five money to fund our customers' salaries. So I was paying 50 salaries here while I was in the UK. Wow. Um, and then deep into lockdown in the UK, I came here and then that's literally, we're just starting the company and just making it a thing. Okay, so, yeah. and, and being able to transition and come over was because everyone was having to work from home, so you had yeah. that kind of flexibility. Yeah, yeah. Being able to maybe what, work remote whilst you were getting things up and running. Yeah, so I was working remotely, everyone was at home. Even here, like, we had, I think it was three people on the team at the time. Mm -hmm. And we were working on Zuberi as well at the same time. So they were working remotely too. Um, and then in January, February, February 2021, we got the space, our first space, not this space, our other space. And then we all just came in here and just started working. Right. Yeah, literally. And, and, and from a funding standpoint, have you, as you've grown and you've been looking to expand or grow the team, have you gone for outside um, finance or, or venture yeah, yeah, capitalists I mean, or, you know, like some of these tech, big tech companies who fund startups? Absolutely. That's, that's a big part of my job. So we have raised some money. We haven't raised as much as everybody else. Okay. We've raised good funding and we've kept it lean. And we've also had like backing from Google as well, which okay. has like, been very helpful as well. So yeah, we've, we've, we're raising money now, but we haven't raised as much as everybody else. Right. But I think we've done a lot with what we have raised. Okay. You know, so if there's anyone out there who's kind of looking at, hey, I've got an innovative idea, I want some a big backing, do you need to go through that process of all right, demonstrating that you put your own money behind it before seeking bigger investments. I think when it comes to Google, they're looking for big ideas. Okay. Right? They're looking for people who have big ideas, big visions, have already started, are already productive, already have a product, already have a team. Um, so they're just looking like, and again, they're looking at your culture as well. Mm -hmm. right? So there's things like, you know, even like the gender split in your team. They're looking at little things because right. your culture needs to be able to align with their culture. If right. they're funding you, if they're backing you, you need to be able to like align with what they believe in as yes, well. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think naturally, Zuberi kind of just fits in that. Yes, definitely. So, um, definitely. I've seen that mix you myself. You've seen the culture yeah. already, yeah, since yeah. you've been here. So it was quite easy for us, but I think the key is just to be productive, start and have a big vision. That's basically And being able to just demonstrate how you've been working through that process yeah, along the absolutely. way. That's good. Absolutely. So I'm here with the co-founder of Zuberi, Nana Adamako. Hi, Nana, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Yep. It's good to finally meet you on the other side. I know yeah. we met you and we catch up all the time in London. Yeah. I know we've met at some of the Beyond Year return events and tech in Ghana. Mm -hmm. You had the um, privilege of coming to talk about Zuberi yeah, earlier on in London, the year yeah. in London. So just for people watching, um, you know, we're talking about the fintech space, it's a growing or exponentially growing market that we know in Ghana and Africa and mm -hmm. other countries around the world. Just tell people about your story. How did you get into fintech as a lady? And mm -hmm. 
you know, what's your experience and journey been like so far? Yeah, cool. Thank you. I began my career in general in finance, so working in risk, but in like more of a corporate setting. Right. So in operational risk. Um, then I got pretty bored of it after like two and a half years yeah. and thought like, what next? Prior to that, actually, it was around 2016-ish mm -hmm. where in London, fintech was now starting to brew and bud. So we saw Monzo coming out, yeah. Revolut. Um, go cardless, all of these new revolutionary like technologies yeah. had began. So I was like, this is pretty exciting. Um, so my plan was to move from corporate to like a fintech. Okay. Um, but I ended up first in consulting. Um, also because I wanted to work on different kinds of projects and understand different institutions. Um, so I started working as a financial consultant. Um, which I did that for about one and a half years and figured, nah, still bored. Um, <laughs> what, what kind of like job would I like really enjoy and still within like the finance space because that's always been like my area of interest yeah. um, from school, etc. cetera. Um, that would make me feel like I'm impacting something or like changing something or right. revolutionizing something. So then I um, became a very early employee at Tap Tap Send. Um, okay. For people who don't know what Tap Tap Send is, just give them a quick yeah. So Tap Tap Send is a that. remittance company. Um, it's a no fee remittance company, one of the first mm -hmm. um, where the diaspora are able to send money instantly and quickly to their family or friends or whatever like they need to send money to Ghana for um, instantly. Uh, so yeah, that was four years ago. Right. A huge thing, a big thing. Now you know the market's getting a bit saturated, but. We were able to be one of the pioneers of like of bringing space. down the cost of remittance because in those days, like, there were people were still charging fees, etc. Yes. Now it's a standard. You actually can't operate if you're charging fees. You're not competitive at all. So we brought that. We brought that and, and made a big, made a big thing out of it. But what was exciting for me in that was like I was working in London, but I was working on Ghana stuff. Right. Um, I, I remember one of my first early days, I had to speak to a customer in Italy and they were just speaking tree at me. They were just speaking tree They were in Italy yeah, and they yeah, were speaking yeah, tree yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I was like, how did I end up here? Yeah. It was really funny, but it was also really like cool and yeah. fun to be working on FinTech, to be working in a startup and then to be working for my own people. Right. Um, and I think those, that time frame and that um, experience um, set me up for um, this adventure. Yeah, right. to very, because able to meet like partners, learn more about the Ghanaian landscape and the players here and what was happening. And four years on, this was the perfect time to make the transition mm -hmm. and our operations a lot smoother because we had some relationships already right. um, to get us off the ground. Yeah, and so here, here I am, which is a good time. Four years ago, I was convinced I wanted to move to Ghana to do FinTech okay. and it definitely wasn't the right time. I think now um, it's still relatively early, mm -hmm. um, so plenty of space for anyone who's interested in um, doing something within FinTech within in Ghana. Space, yeah. um, but now we have like... Um, more uh, regulatory infrastructure to like get it going. Yes, um, make sure that things are done in a kind yeah. of compliance and, and governance way. Yeah, um, a lot more partners. Yeah, it's just a lot easier. The industry has developed yeah. a bit more. So you can see it shaping now, how I was seeing it shaping in 2016 with like the Monzos, etc. See where they are now. Yeah. We're still at the beginning of that. What's really also fascinating is you've got a very young and innovative and creative team yeah that, the cool, that I call are, them the cool kids the cool very, kids yeah 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 so, so again within the tech landscape in Ghana mm -hmm. and you know what we're seeing happening around the job challenges mm. that young people are having mm -hmm. how do you see that tech is being the kind of equalizer around you know people getting being highly skilled mm -hmm. and qualified and having the right opportunities to go and yeah. You know, use that skill, talent and creativity yeah. that they've developed. I mean, it's wonderful. I think um, as even the domestic industry is developing, mm -hmm. there are more opportunities for um, young talent who maybe traditionally wouldn't have really found their, um, whether it be niche, footing or place to 
um, release their creativity yeah. in the working environment and get paid, um, that's also like developing. For us, we have a motion designer, we have UX guys, we have um, growth marketers, we have... Um, and these aren't always actually the roles that some of our staff have come in from. Okay. It's stuff that they've come in and learnt and developed, but and know, had the interest, in, yeah. you know, had the right attitude and were able to like run with it and be very independent. I think it's super exciting. There's lots of talent in Ghana. Yeah. So more opportunities domestic and definitely internationally. With the rise of remote working, etc. I know and that what tech yeah, brings, yeah. a lot of people are able to, you know, get contracts outside, etc. To do like Benjamin, for example, there's a blog coming out on his story, but he actually started working for Zuberi. He did random projects for Julian like two years before it was even a thing. That right. He wanted a motion designer to join our team. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah, that ability to connect with people. This was when Julian was still in London. Right, he so he connected, he was doing exactly. some work. Yeah, right. yeah. Which, so which is really good, yeah. Stories, yeah. How have you seen the opportunities that, or the exposure Tech and Ghana gives a brand like Zuberi, who's got a relatively new service that you're wanting to bring to market? Yeah. And, you know, being in a space where you're going to be amongst, you know, that whole international. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of people that fly in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the event's also done in London as well. Exactly. So. It's fantastic. I went to my first tech in Ghana in 2019 in Ghana. Okay. At the Accra Digital Centre in November. So this time, what, three years ago? Yeah. And there was Visa, there was Express Pay, there was Z Pay. A lot of the players that we still see today. Yeah. And it was, it was fantastic. The calibre of, the quality of um, conversation, the understanding that of what was coming up. I remember Adama from Visa was talking about, you know, she's ready to partner with fintechs. Visa's ready to like, um, you know, uh, collaborate and yeah. work with a lot more fintechs. But at the time, there weren't that many fintechs. Um, so like three years on, knowing that we're coming, yes. we started something. Um, we're able to partner with these guys who were on the panel, some of which are going to be on the panel, the panel still. Yeah. Um, shows there's like a lot of um there's a lot of capacity there's mm -hmm. a lot of um interesting things brewing yeah um there's space for us shows that there's space um and yeah it's super exciting i think it's super exciting um testament that we've actually been able to get it off the ground, off the ground yeah. that we can actually come and speak at tech in ghana about yes. it in terms of life here in Ghana, life here in the UK, hmm. what, what are your pros and cons on both ends of the spectrum? Here. I love it here. It's fantastic for my wellness. Yeah. Um, and balance, lifestyle balance, mm -hmm. work-life balance. I can go to the beach at the weekend if I want right. to. You know, the weather's fantastic. Personally, <laughs> yeah. It is really good to be around my people, yeah. to be working with my people. There's a lot of opportunity here to do really well to get things off the ground. Right. So this is where I'm supposed to be right now. The cons. <laughs> the, the roads. <laughs> some of the, the roads. The, the potholes. Some of the roads are cons. Like I actually bought wellies um, because my, my road is still going through something. I, when it rains and it floods sometimes, it's just not pretty. Right. Thankfully, we haven't had any like drastic dumps or dumps or stuff. But okay. yeah, the roads, I think, are the only thing right now. London's good. It's definitely like still top there in favorite mm -hmm. cities um lots of opportunities but i think at some point you really want to work wise work on something where you feel like you're you're giving your um full like you can see the impact of what you're, you're, you're having the direct impact and right. i did that to be fair with tap tap Zen, but this is 2.0 okay this is 2.0 for me being on the ground so tap tap Zen was like a nice this is a segue. Stepping it was a segue, yeah, yeah. segue. Well, listen, I'm looking forward to going to check out the rest of the facilities here. Sport, and yeah. I'm really, you know, looking forward to seeing what Zuberi builds, um, the transformation and mm -hmm. the impact it has, and also seeing your marketing team's branding They're on the trotros. They're brilliant. They're brilliant. Yeah. Really, really like. It's funny actually because some of the things that they come up with, uh -huh. some companies in the UK could never. Like, Come up with that. You, it's just, yeah, brilliant. I think if you 
just foster the right environment. The kind of ideas that yeah, people come up with. Insane. I jumped on the plane, London to Accra. I cry about when I touch down in Kotoka. Got love for my people, we go hustle every day, more power to my people. The hustlers, street sellers, to the sweet mother. I'm here on the ground every day. Afira Jamara, head of marketing at Zuberi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Julian. That's great. How long have you worked for Zuberi? Um, I've been here for the last year and let's say seven months. Okay. So, yeah. and, and what's your background in terms of education? Where did you, where did you study? So um, I've had a background in marketing all the way from uni till now. So okay. um, I have a Bachelor of Science degree in marketing from the University of Ghana. And then I went ahead to do my one year national service with Data Bank, but I worked in the marketing team as well. So that's basically where my marketing career kicked off. When I worked at Data Bank, basically um, my biggest project was to roll out the Data Bank mobile app. So that's what's kind of got me into the fintech marketing space. Okay. Um, after working at Data Bank for a year, I transitioned to another fintech called PoundPay, and I led the marketing team there as well, the Ghanaian marketing team. And then I finally came to Zuberi. So yeah, wow. I've had like a fintech marketing experience from the very beginning. From the beginning, right, which now. you're in right now. Yeah. So tell me, what was it that brought you to Zuberi? Did they come looking for you or um, did you hear about this new innovative tech company that was coming? So I remember that day so well. I was chilling. I went out for lunch at work and Nana dropped me a message on LinkedIn um, saying she wanted to talk to me. She had seen my profile and she thought I'll be a good fit so we should have a conversation. So on that same day, right after lunch, around 5 o'clock, I drove to the Zuberi office and I had a conversation with Nana. When I walked into the office, I met the devs. They had like branded items on the tables. It was just a very fun, casual office vibe. And then I go into like the interview session, which really wasn't an interview session. It was us just talking. Right. And from the conversations we had, from um, what the vision of the company was that Nana and Julian shared with me, I definitely knew that it was a place I would fit perfectly in. So that's what made me transition and join the And Zuberi take the team. step to becoming a Zuberi. So in terms of marketing and branding, what, what are the areas that really appeal to you around like what, what you like to see? you know, campaigns, etc., or stories of, of companies? Yeah, so um, from a general perspective, um, marketing only makes sense to me when it tells a story. So when I see campaigns that don't really tell stories but are just like call to actions, personally, I'm not driven by those. At Zuberi, we are building more than just a mobile app. That's the thing. We are actually trying to build a financial community. So we are trying to be in the same space with our users, understand them, so that we make sure that the products we are building are products that they need. So um, having this at the back of my mind, from a marketing perspective, we are also trying to be in the everyday um, you know, process of our user. Mm -hmm. So we want you to see a Zuberi Trotro when you're picking a car on your way to work. We want you to buy a snack from a Zuberi branded container. Um, if you decide to you know, buy breakfast, both fruits or something on the road, it will be nice for the hawker to be wearing like a Zuberi apron. Um, when you decide to go on social media, your favorite influencers should be talking about Zuberi. Um, we are not trying to do the typical, you know, we are a mobile app, blah, 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 on a billboard. That's not what we are trying to do. And we are trying to make the community as engaging as possible. So we have exclusive events for people who are on the Zuberi app. We are thinking of ways we can play fun games together. So we have a whole shoot room upstairs for creating that kind of content. We are basically trying to build an engaged financial community, something we don't have in Africa. Right. We're trying to start that. Yeah. That's good. And I also saw earlier you've got a Zuberi logo and we went out in your Zuberi car. <laughs> yes. So the idea behind that, that car is for the company, but the idea behind that is to have it on as many Uber cars or as many cars as possible. So even on the road right now, there are a couple of branded um, Uber cars that have the Zuberi logo. Right. Um, there are a couple of churchers that have the Zuberi logo as well. A lot of people tag us yes. when they see it in town. And it's a fun way to know that people are engaging with, with, with your with brand your, your and your they brand, identify yeah. themselves in the community. That's perfect for us. A company where the founders of Ghanaians from the British diaspora, what has that meant in terms of the culture that has been brought to the company as well that you may have seen that's slightly different from some of the other companies that you've worked for? Um, honestly, having a blend I think is always the best because Nana and Julian have an experience outside of Ghana 
gives us different perspectives in everything we do. So if you've seen from the culture in the office, from your tour this morning, yeah. this isn't your typical um, Ghanaian office where everything is serious. Yeah. But at the same time, too, we also try to let them also see the Ghanaian side of things. Not that they're not Ghanaian, but we also let them know like how the locals will perceive things if we try to do it in a way that's a bit UK-ish. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just like a blend. It's us understanding each other and, you know, basically making it work. And making it work. Yeah. It's been a pleasure to meet you and we're looking forward to seeing all the wonderful, creative branding campaigns or if initiatives be, that you have. Will you be here in December? I'm not going to be here this December. January. January I'm here. Yes, we are most likely going to have a very, very big party. Okay. So if you're here, I'll definitely send you an invite. I'll definitely be yeah. there. Yeah. All right? Great. So this is... Julian with Making News Ghana here at the Zuberi headquarters. I jumped to uh, the plane, London to Accra, Aquaba. When I touch down in Kotoka, got love for my people. We go hustle every day, more power to my people. The hustlers, street sellers, to the sweet mothers on the grind every day, helping each other, making moves, make it happen. That's the signature. Ghana.